All right, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Special Interest Group Office Hours. It's the 18th of January. Um, proposed topics, pull request progress, contributors summit proposal, let's call it an outline, uh, Jenkins and Google Summer of Code, and a Jenkins Wiki Plan. Anything else, Meg, that you'd like to put on the list? Um, if if you mean, I'd like to talk about some sort of um, uh, doc, do publicizing the the doc this meeting for people who haven't contributed before. Oh, and okay, right. our diversity council to take. Okay, so we encouraging encouraging new contributors i like that um especially good. underserved communities shall we say is that the proper term i think yeah good good okay mm. that's our hook <laughs> i like that yeah i think that's a good idea yeah all right anything else to put on the agenda nope unless Okay, then let's go ahead and run through it. So first item, pull request progress. I made no progress in the last week on the scaling Jenkins on Kubernetes pull request. I did talk to Kristen Whetstone about it and she's agreed to help me next week to diagnose whatever my problems are. So okay. um, Kristen and Mark met last week. Uh, Kristen is willing to help the coach when Mark has time. Cool. Okay, great. Encouraging new contributors. Let's take the topic. So go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm trying to see what you're typing there. Oh, so well, so Zenob, our Google summer of our Google season of docs contributor is a good example of coming from an underserved community. Oh, okay. She is she is a Nigerian woman who is also a leader in the um, in the coding community there in Nigeria. Oh, interesting. And and so it's it's good and it re, it reminds it re, there are several things i learned from doing that one was okay so Zinab is a nigerian writer a developer and writer and she works in a tech company there uh google summer of or season of docs uh docs um writer for us so she wrote for us for three months google paid her and it, she still continued. We meet with her every Thursday. Huh. So, but there were some complexities there that, that as we try to approach this, one was we learned that, um, that internet is not always on and is not always high speed. Right. And what that meant was we switched, switched off video pure screen sharing and uh, accepted that sometimes she was dialing in from a phone. Now, I don't know what it means to join from a phone or from another device if she's calling internationally, if that means she's incurring extra charges or whatnot. Um, it was, but she was willing to do that and it seemed to work okay so long as we took and notes were important and recording the the call the the meeting was extra important indeed and uh, the other thing we learned was that time zone matters <laughs> right because it had to be after her work in nigeria her working day in nigeria uh but uh, within waking hours for mentors. So what time did that end up being for uh, morning been? morning my time so it was about what well, I hard to translate it to UTC it was about it was about 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific. Okay. 
So let's do it this way. It was 11 a.m. Denver. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah. My time, now, so use. Now, how did she get involved? How did she get, did she find you guys and look for you or? You know, so Google Season of Docs uh, is a, a, a highly promoted program promoted by uh, by Google, but it's it has it has a, a challenge in that it's a limited set of potential contributors, right? Exactly. It's, the project could only take on one, <laughs> and they only they only awarded fifty projects worldwide. So we were Jenkins was one of fifty, and this was our first year doing it. Right. <clears throat> And what I'm thinking of, I mean, let's face it, part of it is I'm banking off you being you. You know, anybody who shows up here is going to get the sort of <clears throat> treatment that somebody new needs to get to get enthused. So to mm -hmm. me, it's a matter of publicizing. And because I can see this as being a starter drug for somebody who might want to contribute software rather than docs. Ah, yes. You know, it's sort of like anybody could come in and, you know, replace a comma with a period or fix it you know there's a lot of trivial stuff that anybody could do with docs i mean vlad is on beyond zebra um, mm -hmm. and caliber people like that are certainly always welcome too but that's what i was thinking of this as sort of a starter drug as a way just to open up the j because i've dealt with a couple of other like boy that open stack um community that was not for the faint of heart that was a blood sport oh. Ah, okay. So, so there are places where it is challenging to contribute even documentation changes. It's, it's challenging just to deal with the people to have, you know, the Jenkins world is just inordinately nice people. And nobody's going to get called an ignorant slut because they don't know something. Right. Um, the, Got it. The open, the open stack world. And I like these people and I love the technology. I actually said it's fun. But they led with the assumption that you were an idiot that we're gonna that's gonna screw things up, and mm. you could try to prove that you weren't. But even then, you know, it was a constant challenge. It was that sort of you know those people. Right. Okay. Um, but so I'm seeing this as you know, so it's sort of a way to say, come on and see, like you guys did it, uh, used to do at Jenkins World, kind of you know, mm -hmm. come in and do something. And then right. look around and if you're really interested, what else would you like to do? You know, I figure we'll get, if we're lucky, 50% of the people who come in, you know, they'll come in and they'll do a couple of things and they'll go, okay, that was fun for my resume and they'll move on. But mm -hmm. then if we get 50 or even 25% of them decide to hang around and contribute, that's a big boon for us. Good. Yeah. So it's actually a big boon for CloudBees because we do a lot of hiring out of contributors to open source, right? We do. That's correct. Yeah, so how about let's I'm going to put some links to some some good suggestions. So what there is in in the documentation, there are in the documentation issue list. There's this concept of a good first issue. And right now we have 13 of those that are open. OK, and these are these are prime candidates for what what would be called simple fixes. Right. Right. Good first issues. Uh huh. Good. Okay. So how would we? So what I'm thinking is I'm I was thinking about posting. We've got a Slack channel, the diversity people, to mm -hmm. put this up as a because I'd like to let them do as much of the publicity as we can get them to do right. And I'm I'm thinking maybe the best thing I can think is that we announce on a certain day we're having a special. Uh, docs um, office hours that is targeted for first time contributors. And we can walk through, everybody's got to, um, they fork and clone, I guess, but they've got to download the repo. They've got to see the structure of it, you know, see how they find open issues or what they, you know, just kind of, I'm sure you know, I haven't, I actually probably should do that too. I've never downloaded this stuff. Hmm. Well, but but one of the nice things about about this kind of about this particular environment is many of these can be done 
many of these good fish issues can be done without ever cloning the repository locally. Oh. And so it's, oh yeah, this thing, I can follow the steps on this page and it will show me, okay, I can do this and I can do it from inside GitHub. Oh. Don't even have to clone locally. Use so the GitHub editor, okay. Right, and and those kinds of things are, are that's why they're good first issues. Now, one of the other things that we probably need though, is we likely need to identify need to identify more good first issues because in the past we've been in danger of exhausting our supply of mm -hmm. good first issues. Or submit additional good first issues. Now, um, Jonathan used a great technique and uh, Daniel Beck reminded me that we, we need more of this. We have lots and lots of wiki transformation steps that need to be done. Ah. Now, wiki transformation is not a simple, it's the, the, the easy ones are largely done. It's not as trivial as just transform it. It's you've actually got to write the documentation using the wiki as a good source of information. But as part of this wiki plan here, one of the, one of the things we need to do is eventually replace wiki.jenkins.io with content that's on the Jenkins site. Right. So, so it's, it's a good one where good first issues, wiki transformation is one of them that identify topics. Now, another thing that Daniel Beck suggested, or that came to my mind as Daniel and I were talking about the state of the documentation is it would be good to have an overview or a an inventory of the wiki content and assign pages to destinations on jenkins.io ah. one of the one of the challenges is we need experts who can look at a page let's choose an arbitrary page Actually, let's go even one worse. We're going to choose a page that is, we're going to choose a high frequency page. Oh, oh, I know where I can find one. Hang on. I can find it like this. The Jenkins Wiki exporter has in it a list of top URLs. Here we go. Uh -huh. Okay, so here are the most frequently accessed URLs. So um, here's a fascinating one parameterized build and we've we've received ah. quite a number of requests for more information on how do you parameterize a build but in this case this page talks about freestyle projects what we need ah. is more information on pipeline project parameterization right. strengths and weaknesses of that and so so what we would do is we need somebody who can look through these things and say hey this page should map into something that is here and needs to be expanded to include not just freestyle parameters, but pipeline parameters. Right. So, so it's, but that kind of inventory process that needs somebody skilled, a you, a me or a Vlad to look at it and say, okay, I've read this page and I think it's like this. Now, there is a, a sheet that we've been using. Where is it? This one. Yes. The wiki conversion pro progress page that Jonathan and I have used to track what we're doing with those, those pages. So here is, here is, here is a beginning of an inventory of wiki pages. It's only 150 pages, but it is 150 pages. Right. And yeah, so for instance, this one I think is already done. If I look at that, no, it's not. I thought we got this one done. Okay. Maybe there, is there an open PR maybe or? 
There is there is not. So that's a that's an easy one. So so one of the niceties of this particular sheet is it took the access count values that I was showing some time a page or two ago and sorts by them. Ah. So the hot pages are at the top. Yes. And and the hot pages parameter defaults option, for instance, this is another example of, oh, that's more information about parameters. Or no, is this parameter default? Oh, this is a plugin document. So that's that's a different thing, but it requires somebody to read each of these and and recommend what the action is for that thing. Right. Okay, so sorry, I've been blathering on quite a bit. Oh, that no, this is fabulous because this is exactly what I need. I have just the vaguest notion of this. Well, and, and let me let me put links to these this these in, these information sources. See the wiki progress uh, sheet for current efforts. And this is also in old copy older co notes from this meeting because Jonathan reviewed them with us, mm -hmm. but, but it's, it's a really healthy thing to avoid duplicating when we've already got it. Right, exactly. So inventory the wiki content, sign pages to destinations. Yeah, or, and so it's really a create issues and assign pages to destinations. Right. And that's what Jonathan did when he got us ready for Hacktoberfest back in October, is he did exactly that. He took the list of pages and re read each one and said, I think this goes here and I think this goes here. OK, and that's probably for beginners. I mean, you don't know who comes in, how much beginner they are. But that's probably something that they need to be told this, that this page needs to be rewritten and yeah, well, well, it. see, and just thinking about one of my <laughs> worries here is that many of these pages need need until someone has done this initial triage, this initial review, uh -huh. they, they risk doing more harm than good if they attempt to transform it. Right. Because many of them will take the wiki exporter and will say, oh, all I have to do is run the Jenkins wiki exporter. And right. that will give me a copy of the page. But the page is in no condition to be placed directly into into Jenkins.io, right? It's, right. It's it may be ten years old. It may be full of inaccuracies. It may be it, it will certainly have lots of uses of the words master and slave and White things list. like that. Yes, yes. Exactly right. It will use the deprecated terminology, and and it's terribly inefficient for us to insert corrections to those after they've started the pull request much right. better if we can say it in the pull request you need to make this change and this change okay let's see what so where were we here so now now this is sort of maybe what we talk about here is what kinds of projects might suit these new contributors and I'd, I'd lobby that there's there's more there are several right so let's talk about possible new or good first projects. Or good first tasks might be wiki conversion, but I think even better than wiki conversion is plug in documentation conversion. Ah. From wiki to github. Uh huh. And that one is, it's it's still, oh, here it is. That's this project, plugin migration, where we've got, we've now completed the migration to documentation as code for 600 plugins, but we have over 1,000 still to do. Right. So, so, so what would, yeah, so when, and so this probably comes, I mean, this is a multi-stage thing, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm actually thinking we might ask, we might tell, you know, tell people that everybody is welcome, but ask them to fill out a form ahead of time so that, A, we have an idea of how many people, but on there we can ask them what their experience is, both with Jenkins and with tech writing, 
um, and anything that they're particularly interested in or uh, something like that, you know, so that, so that we can prepare, you know, and it might be you get, you get somebody who's, you know, terribly interested in plugins and, you, you know, so we know. So what I'm thinking, and we have hour long sessions, but so the first session, let's, what's the reason, what if we had five to 10 people who show? And of course, if we got 50 people applying, we might, that might change things, but let's say that would also how many we're going to have. So let's say we had five to 10 people show up. They could go through and each do one of these trivial things that they could do through the um, through the GitHub editor, right? Mm. And then we could talk about other stuff. And then we could have another session where we start out with how they, because they're not going to want to do too much that if they're going to be serious here, they need to fork and clone, right? Mm -hmm. And we could have another session where we start out real fork and clone and then start assigning, you know, you know, we could, and we can show the existing issues that are up there and talk about this, you know, or groups of things and let people volunteer for what they want. And each one gets an assignment, right? Right. And then we, and then after those two, though, we sort of go back into normal doc office hours, right? That each week they come and what they've done and what they need and, and in reviewing the PRs, what we see that's not clear, et cetera. And with any luck, we build up a little community here. I don't know if that'll work. That may be too optimistic, but mm. it could happen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So first one to two sessions of office hours focused on tutorials, right? Tutorial on personal I, tutoring yeah. of new contributors. Right. And then after those initial tutorial uh, initial tutoring sessions invite them back right because i think for me i mean i still have i keep wanting to contribute and i don't get this is a huge barrier just to get everything set up right mm -hmm. you know and then once i mean i'm an experienced writer once everything's set up then you can get in and have fun but that would that's you know and if somebody's over your show say now everybody everybody fork <laughs> and everybody clone and now look at what we've got and here's how it's you know and once you know that then it's good yeah that's very good so now now it's an uh, there's an interesting challenge hiding there here as an example of a, of a complexity of getting started Xenob had had significant challenges uh, starting development because she was on Windows mm. and the Windows environment setup is not straightforward. Right. In her case, it was that uh, Mark, or let's see, Oleg runs Windows, Windows and uses WSL2 or uh, Jenkins.io dev. Uh -huh. But Xenob could not run, had an older Windows version that can't run W2, WSL2. Oh. And, and I, I understand that, right? That's, that's, and so what she did, Xenob's solution was a virtual machine running Linux. Ah. And, and all she had to do was find that solution and it, it ran, now runs on her Windows computer just fine. It just happens to be a virtual machine inside her Windows computer. Right. I was thinking more of getting some underserved American community. We get Africa, because well, I know a few years ago I was involved with friends who were in Ethiopia who were trying to get computers up there and I was bitching because they were giving them all Windows, not Linux. Uh -huh. They weren't uh -huh. allowed to put Linux. The, the students were not allowed to use, they were, this was a bunch of students actually. And the universities did not allow anything but Windows. The government did not allow anything but Windows for there. It was a very flaky and you know interesting choice. Can we say okay. it was a brittle, it was a brittle infrastructure. Yeah, that sounds brittle, huh? Yeah. Um, and they you know, their response to a brittle infrastructure was to make sure everybody was running roughly the same things. And, and of course, nobody can afford new computers, so they're all getting old computers. So sure. Well, and and correctly, they're grateful to have any computer, right? Mm -hmm. An older, 
so in in some of these computers some of these environments that they might say hey i need to develop on a raspberry pi right okay and and what could we do if we wanted to develop on a raspberry pi here are the steps you might take that might be a good one to consider actually that is you know what and this is good too because the first session it doesn't matter if they're going to go to github and use the github editor right uh -huh. most of these issues go away for that right so that's the first session and then we find out let's say we get 10 people and five of them are running windows in africa mm -hmm. we have a separate session to get them set up and then we have another session for people who are running windows elsewhere or linux or you know whatever we see what we've got and we might you know we might have targeted sessions for the next one right you know i don't know how to reach these underserved communities because one of the challenges is that they are in fact difficult to reach mm -hmm. right it's i don't know how to find the people in in many of these places where ah you might be interested in helping but it has to fit between your work day and your family and all the other complexities right unless you work for a company that will let you do this as part of your job that's a possibility too mm -hmm. my my sort of and that's where i was thinking that our diversity council might be able to help us ah, okay um, i'm thinking for starters I assume we have the names of people who attended some of those sessions at DevOps World, which oh. the sessions, frankly disappointed me because it was all this talk about, yes, you know, the big bad white men treat you badly. We all know this. You're not alone. It's not you. End of story. You know, and it was like, you're a DevOps World. I wanted something to know. I mean, actually, for this year, we can do this if this works, say, you know, if you'd like to get involved, here's some things you can do where we guarantee it will be safe. Oh, Something okay. like that. And that's why well, I mean, and... we should bug Alyssa because this is, so, you know, I thought they should have said that then, you know, the office. Well, I mean, they could have and... oh, go ahead, speak. Sorry, we have we have several upcoming events just like this. Mm -hmm. So we've got FOSDEM and the CICD Dev Room. Um, that is being sponsored by um, Olivier Verini. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we could ask, invite him to see if it would be allowed to do a brief pitch. We've got, uh, I believe it's June, has CDCon by the Continuous Delivery Foundation uh, is a, as a conference as well. And uh, I'm speaking at at Star East, the software testing conference in April. Uh, can plug, can invite people to assist with Jenkins at the end of my talk. Right. Okay. Now I don't know who we would who would we would ask for the attendee list. I'm not sure they'd be willing to share it, but it's, it seems good like a good idea to ask. Right. <clears throat> and I mean, we don't want to be exclusionary. There are there are nerdy white men out there sure, <laughs> that are shy. We'll take we'll take we'll take outgoing gregarious people too. Right. That's, right. I, I mean, I'm thinking that the outgoing gregarious are less intimidated, you know, but hmm. you can't tell. Right. It's a, it's sort of, I, I see it as a general call, but making sure that it gets to people that we know are floating around mm -hmm. in these other groups. Um, Good. Okay. Okay. So we've got this. Well, I, what I'm sort of thinking is, let, I'm going to ping, um, if you, or, or you can, but if, since I could do something here, I don't do much. Um, I could ping the diversity council and say what we were talking about and, you know, that we needed help, you know, defining and publicizing this, to, you know, give them a high level and uh -huh. see if they thought it was interesting. And then maybe we talk to them and then we can start moving forward on plans. Right. I like that. It's, I think they're largely, you know, targeted on getting uh, Sasha, who is his heart's in the right place, but when he goes to hire an exec, he seems to like white men. So I think that's a lot of their energy right now, you know, 
and uh-huh. uh, and you know hiring is great, but this is a way to bring more people into the fold, right? Right. Sure. And and we will, you know, and the good ones will eventually hire. But okay. So does that sound like a plan? It does. I like that. This is. I love it because I had just the vaguest notion, and you, of course, took off and made it a wonderful plan. Oh, how why we love you. That's very kind of you. Thanks. Okay. Anything else on on the on I, the community outreach effort? I think that's a start. Okay, great. And we'll we'll keep it on the agenda and plan to talk with it, talk to it each time we meet as we make progress. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Next topic on my list was this contributor summit proposal outline. So, uh, as part of FOSDEM, we've traditionally when when FOSDEM was a face-to-face event, we used FOSDEM as a way to also ask the contributors to Jenkins who are going to FOSDEM to come a day early and to uh-huh. join us for a contributor summit all day long. Uh-huh. Well, this year, FOSDEM is virtual only. It's online only. But we'd like to roughly two, one to two weeks after FOSDEM do something similar, but as a Jenkins contributor summit uh, online, so virtual. Yes. And the idea there is that what I've been discussing with others is we take an initial live 90 to 60 to 90 minute contributor meeting. Uh, so this is the launch meeting, right? Uh huh. And in it, Oleg gives us a project overview or somebody from the governance board. Each special interest group highlights interesting things from theirs. And then we use that to collect the interest of the people attending and then assign them to um, various, to if you call them subgroups. And then subgroups have a lead that finds a, a workable time for the members because of course, when we were all sitting together in Belgium, the time is pretty easy. Now that we aren't, we've got people in India, people on the West coast of the U S people in Japan, people in on the East coast in the U S people in Europe, people in Africa. Mm -hmm. And so find, find a workable time for the members to meet for one hour. And they, they meet together and then that's that are these theme sessions and and the theme sessions work on their topic oh this is not unrelated to our other top other discussion is it no right it's well it, it would be i would be surprised if uh, someone who is not already part of the community found this to be especially effective they probably won't because they're likely going to drop into a, a, a session that is filled with experts or that has several very expert people and they'll tend to be a little intimidated. Oh, I'm not an expert yet. And, and so I'm not sure that this is a great first time contributor experience. They're welcome to attend, but first time contributors can be easily dissuaded from contributing by feeling like they're in a room of geniuses. But very, there's a lot of very seer, serious senior engineers out there uh-huh. who might be new to Jenkins who would probably be put off by the Dick and Jane check out a repo. Right, correct. And, and those kind of people are certainly welcome and would be de- we would be delighted to welcome them to these, these sessions. Right. If we got enough and they like these project groups too that would be so there we could get a wiki project group for instance right exactly well and i would that one i'm prone to put it underneath the docs the docs group just I, say oh, yes Definitely. docs docs is going to handle our wiki migration and wiki migration is a real thing and we want to do it we think it's going to take multiple years to get that content off there into places where it's better right we have wiki migration we have plugin migration right terminology change now 
See, the terminology changes are better for lightweight people, right? Very good. Yes, actually, that's a very good example. Um, terminology changes are a really great place for someone to say, hey, I'd like to contribute in this area. Here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, good example. Let's put that on our notes there of good first tasks include terminology fixes and the documentation terminology fixes even are because we, we, we've made the controller change changes uh, right. master to controller slave to agent whitelist to a lot to context to clear a phrase phrasing or allow list and usually it's write it as a clear phrase okay. blacklist likewise is usually clear phrase or deny list um your first one by the way is jenkins master to jenkins controller ah right it's also github master good point right Yeah, very good, yep. Yeah, okay. Um, and then because that, it's just in the text, it's easy, but then there's the next step, there's a lot of screenshots. Oh, right, right, good point. Terminology fixes, and this is text, screenshots, um, translations mm -hmm. uh, and more. Right. Good, okay. But that is, I don't, yeah, I don't have the detail, but it's like, that's the model, even if apart, we might do something separate, but it's a similar mod, maybe it's a similar model, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what we're talking about. There's many things here that need to go on, so. Yeah, okay, good. Oh, so cool. Okay. When is FOSDA, when is this session planned? What's the date of it? So this is uh, approximately, let's see, I can look it up now in just a minute. FOSDA is Saturday and Sunday, the 6th and 7th of February, and I'm envisioning two weeks thereafter. So likely. So late the February. 16th, 17th, and 18th. So February 16 through 18, or February 23 through 25. Okay. So then we wouldn't want to try to, if we did anything, the earliest we'd want to try to do it would be late March or April, I'm thinking, right? Do, do what? The previous stuff that we were talking about for just the doc stuff. Yeah, I'm assuming, well, I'm assuming we'll need March, we'll need until March or April to get the promotion plan in place to be sure right. we understand how we're going to do this. It won't be much fun if we announce this thing and nobody is there. Right, right. Or if we don't plan enough so we have lots of people and we're sitting there going, um, um, um. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, but it, well, it would be good if we had it scheduled by FOSDEM then too, because if nothing else, you could mention it there. You know, if if there's too many, if you're getting scared by all the big words, you know, don't fret. You know, mm -hmm. pick up what you can, and then we've got this other session that's planned just for newbies. Right. Um, Oh, and you've got Damien, because I remember Damien was big on FOSDEM. Yes, yeah. Damien and Olivier both are, are just absolutely wonderful for FOSDEM. They yeah. are. Great. Okay. So anything else on Contributor Summit? That looks marvelous to me. Okay, yeah. So I'll be sending that... Um, Mark to send the announcement, the draft 
uh, within the next one to two days. Yeah. One um, tangent here. Do we, is there a place for Oleg to also have coming up? I mean, I was thinking we could be a starter drug in docs and if people were really interested in doing more software, we could push them on from there. But maybe Oleg wants to do a Dick and Jane contribute. Well, there's all the stuff about testing that we talk about. If you're, if you don't have something big to contribute as new code, you know, but testing existing stuff is a good starter point for right, software people, right? right? Well, well, and, and certainly we've got, <laughs> We've got very, very precious, so precious uh, time now for contributors because uh, the Jenkins March release, um, the March LTS release needs more testers and more developers. Uh -huh. This is the, the, transi the UI transition uh -huh. from tables from HTML table layout, table based layout to HTML div, div based layout. And right. that transition is significant. It's now it's a thing of beauty, but here, let me show you. You okay yes. if I take just a minute to show what it looks like? Sure. Okay, so here is, here is the Jenkins server running latest long-term support release and we're going to go okay so we're going to make this larger and we're going to go edit the job definition of the git plugins uh yeah why not that's good this job definition if i do configure right here and we wait patiently while it loads. Okay, so notice the layout on the screen here. Okay, okay. remembering remembering this layout. This is our old familiar one. I've seen it. Right. right. So now we're going to go to the new version. Okay, and so here we're going to look at. Whoops. Let's see. Yeah, we wanted the multi-branch. Therefore, we'll take this one. Okay, and we're going to go configure here. Okay, now, if you look here, you'll see, all right, notice how the page is sort of centered here and broader here. Mm -hmm. Notice that things, the layout here is starting to get wide and now if i make this page smaller let's say if i made my screen need a little program just a minute so if i made my screen as though i were running on come on sizer here we go i were running on a, a 1024 by 768 screen oh that doesn't okay look things terrible. Well, so this is this is the old UI, and okay. we haven't we we aren't it's it's not terrible. Oh well, except oh dear, look at this. Here's one example. Uh -huh. hmm, okay, things starting to spill, and the spill is or or you see right here, all branches get the same properties is exp is spilling beyond boundaries. Right. And we've got some UIs where when I get to that point, it gets terrible and dramatic how bad it is. Um, I, it really is, is quite difficult to administer a Jenkins server from a screen that is this narrow, that's only 1K okay. wide. Um, now, when I switch here, it just all stays ever so ah. nicely in bounds. It just looks good. Things that notice the little dashed lines over here. Oh, that yes. It just lays out very, very, this is a result of this tables to divs okay. UI transformation. But of course, Guess what? That means screenshots will need to be updated. Yep. That means that means that we've got some plugins that many plugins actually that need their need to be extended to support this new way of doing the UI. Mm -hmm. And so so there are lots of things that need to be checked to be sure that oh does this work the way I expect it to work with this new release of Jenkins. Right. And and these kind of, now I I tell you it's a much prettier UI in terms of well just just right here top of the page notice that the help icon 
is outside of the frame. Mm -hmm. But Indeed. here it's inside. Uh -huh. It just it it looks right here, whereas yes. here it's oh well, that's sort of sort of sort of looks like the 1990s. Yeah. Yeah. So so these kinds of things are are. Are we going so far? Does this run on your Android or iPhone? It 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 certainly will display on a phone. Absolutely, okay. and and it actually fits quite well on an on a phone. So if I if I shrink this thing down to the usual 800 by 600 that is a phone, uh -huh. it still fits. Uh, and I can still work with it and still use it. Whereas when I do it here, <laughs> oh my, it has it has exploded. Oh, yeah. You notice I've got a horizontal scroll bar and I've got yep. to do all sorts of horrible things in order to interact with this. Oh, in order to click this button, I had to move to the right. Yes. So, so yes, tables to divs is a big deal. And it's a great help, but we need we need we help need a lot testing, of work. developing, et cetera. And within the next, it'll be about two weeks from now that we will choose the base version for the March LTS. And then in March, we will ship it. Ooh. And so we very much need people to be helping us now yes. with, with getting ready for it. So, so that's one of the things that on this, hey, promoting, we need, uh, we need, uh, need more hands helping us test and fix UI issues in the table to div change. And then we need the documentation screenshots to reflect. Right. Are we reviewing the context sensitive help while we're at it too? Uh, I don't think that's been a key focus but certainly there's no reason it can't be done when visiting a, a plugin right now i think the first focus is assure that the ui layout is not completely broken you know the right. ui layout is not badly damaged yeah and that way that might be part of the testing too i mean i i don't think it's all that bad i notice some of a couple of times as i go around every once in a while i find a in context sensitive help that's not really helpful yeah so just so you can to put show... anything you want to in here. And it's like, well, could you give me a hint? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah. So as as to, to give a to give a taste of what it means to to use new new screenshots in the documentation, I, I found it delightful to do the, the Git plugin documentation with the new screenshots because look at, at how it lays out. Oh, Notice yeah. that. Okay, this is a much more comprehensible layout. And guess what? I don't have to do an awful lot of painful trimming, cutting and pasting right. to make it look like it looks okay. It just looks good even at even at smaller resolution. So okay, I'm I'm reading it on my phone. Guess what? It's still workable. Yeah. So so nice. so it, it is the the new ui really is wonderful in terms of in the new the ui improvements are really great for users but we've got to, we need hands to help us be sure that we've got it ready and here i'll embed that link so that global configuration is a great choice of one that shows that really well there we go But it also means I think traditionally we haven't cared that much about front end developers for Jenkins. Most of the action's been in back end stuff. Right. So this is a time to really appeal to front end type people. Well, and and it's it's a, in this case, the I think the precious thing we need right now, actually, oddly enough, is not as much front end. This particular one needs people who are willing to work on a Jenkins plugin. Right. Okay. And so it means we need Java developers who are willing to Jenkins plugin developers who are willing to modify jelly files and modify the Jenkins UI files uh, for tables to divs. Okay. And and that's that's a little different, right? That's. I'm developing in Java code, but it's actually not Java code. It looks much more like HTML than it does Java. Right. So now are we promoting this, say, to the people who went to DevOps? Because 
FOSDOM has tended to be a more of a European thing, right? Mm -hmm. And more, I think more Americans came to, Dev to Jenkins World because it was in the United States, right? right? So, but now that it's online, it doesn't, not all is bad with COVID. Right, right. Um, so yeah, so how are we promoting, I mean, because if we only promote this to our existing developers, we're not making a lot of progress, right? We need to bring in, we need fresh blood. Right, actually, you've got a good point. And one of the things that, that we might, I wonder if we ought to, um, should we include this in a Google Summer of Code um, office hours? Mm. I'll have to discuss, Mark, discuss with Cara, De Lamarck, and Oleg. Uh, the, the challenge is most Google Summer of Code really is by its nature, Java in Jenkins, right? right. And that's, that's, that's the high value thing. That's the algorithmic thing. That's the place where lots of challenges are. And so having them spend a lot of time in this tables to divs code, doesn't serve them well as an applicant to Google Summer of Code mm -hmm. because they need to be in the Java code, not so much in the UI code. But right. let me discuss that with them and see. But gee, I wonder if some of this, should we be promoting it on like some of the job sites? And yeah, I'm... they would I expect would demand money. And I, I'm not sure oh, no. we've gotten no, I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of new graduates, et cetera, people who are actually looking for jobs, that here is a place to get some skills that might help you get the job. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. So I, it, I th we, we suspect that we have, that that's a big part of our argument for the CJE um, certification, that a lot of those are people who are on the job market one way or another. Oh, okay. And they're looking to boost their resume. This is probably more valuable than certification, actually. They'll get real experience. They'll get to know people. And we can't tell them. But if you're out here and doing good work, you're going to get recruited. Right. Good Good point. Yeah, that's a, that's a good suggestion. Okay, very good. Yep. Excellent. So, Meg, I apologize. I'm running out of time. Are there Ooh, yes, crucial okay. things that crucial other things that you and I need to get on to, the, to be sure we discuss today. I don't think so. I think this is the wiki plan. What else is on the list if we, I don't think there's anything else that's. Yeah, there is. Now nah, we did it. Okay. You got grandchildren still there? I do. I'm All gonna right. go play with them now. Go play with them. You'll probably have um, a lot more fun than I'll have making my mother set up her new computer. All right. So the recording will be posted probably within 24 hours. Thanks very much, Meg. Okay, and I will go ahead and post to the Diversity Council, right? Yes, we'll start please. Those discussions. Absolutely. Okay, fabulous. Take Thanks, care. Meg. Talk See to you soon. Bye.